you for turning up Thursday morning, last day of the show. I recognize many faces from our party last night, so I'm especially impressed you're here. But uh, let's get started. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is combining 3D and planar solvers in the same simulation, for example, on your board, your module. And I, I'm going to make the focus a little bit different here. Uh, we all know about these wonderful technologies out there. And in particular, uh, we have the middle bubble here with the planar solvers. Uh, we have Axiom, other competitors have similar products. And you know about the uh, large capacity these simulators have uh, for essentially planar layer problems, uh, vertical vias and are very useful at the board, chip, and package level. Now, also out here are the 3D methods, uh, which are necessary when you don't have a planar structure. So typical examples, BGA balls, bond wires, uh, holes in dielectrics, et cetera. So I think everyone is pretty familiar with these and their various uh, disadvantages and advantages. And the conclusion on that is there's no one best simulator. And more and more, we're faced with the situation uh, like this, where we have a uh, chip. Uh, this happens to be a one-stage mimic amplifier uh, on top of a module. And so you have a situation here where, of course, the majority of the chip, you're obviously going to use a circuit simulator. But then if you look at this spiral on the chip, you may want to model that in EM and you may well be using a planar solver. It's probably going to be faster than the 3D where it works uh, and um, is, quite frankly, just quicker to use. On the other hand, you might want to look at these bond wires uh, and this transition from the chip to your module. And that, of course, requires a 3D solver because you have the issue uh, of the 3Dness of the bond wires, the end of the dielectric, et cetera. So this would be a fairly typical example in today's technologies where you really need to use two different simulators. You're then taking the S parameters from these two simulators and you're combining them. Okay? And you say, okay, so what's the problem? There is no technological problem as such, but there are a number of issues that when people do this, they either forget about or they don't really know how to deal with. Let me briefly describe a couple of those issues, and then we're going to focus on one that I see many customers have problems with or they don't appreciate some of the subtleties. Um, I think we're through with this slide. I think all of you know planar and 3D simulators, so let's move on. Now, the assumptions when you use more than one simulator in a problem, I, I group them the following way. First of all, this word isolation. I'm assuming each simulator is working on a part of the geometry that is relatively well isolated from the, another part of the geometry. Typically, there's a ground plane in there, and we're assuming things aren't interacting too greatly. And the reason you need to make that assumption, quite simply, is if they are interacting, you've left something out of one of the EM simulations. It's going to affect it, and you should have included it. So for example, obviously that spiral on the mimic and those bond wires are probably fairly isolated from one another, and we, it's safe for us to use two different simulators. Um, now, when you end up with the simulation results, you're going to have S parameters. And this is where a lot of the confusion is or perhaps not confusion, but you're just not even aware of the issue. And I'd like to get into some of that. Um, and so, for example, the simulator's S parameters, and we're going to see there's this concept of ground. Every simulator, when you're running on a circuit-type topology, there's a ground in there somewhere. And we'll be seeing details of that. And the problem is the ground can be different for the different simulators. And this is where you can start getting into uh, the confusion. So um, I've taken this talk from a previous talk, like all good marketing talks, and that talk was about two hours long. So I have approximately 10 minutes and one second left. So I am not going to go through all this. I'm going to focus uh, 
on this one issue, the ground assumptions of the simulators and particularly their ports. Okay? There are a lot of other assumptions you need to worry about. The finite element simulator has a boundary. Is it the right boundary, et cetera? We're not going to get into that today. Let's talk about the grounding issue. There's the mimic, there's the board, they have different grounds. Okay? And when you simulate that spiral in the planar simulator axiom, its ground, in this case, is the chip ground. It's the bottom of the chip that's been metallized. It has no idea what this thing is. It's not even in the problem. And what you're about to do in these simulators is you're going to take S parameters out of these and put them into a circuit simulator. And that's what we got to worry about. Uh, these are a couple other quick examples. Uh, this is in our analyst product, our 3D product. And my, uh, it's, of course, a uh, quad flat, uh, flat pack, no lead package, QFN package. The point I want to make here is you'll notice these ports have little ground symbols. They have a ground. And that ground is, in this case, on these guys in here, is the bottom of the chip. And in this case, it's going to be this bottom ground plane that the QFN is attaching to. Those are different grounds in the same simulation. Can you do that? Does it make sense? How do you put it into the circuit simulator? So let's get going on this. It's really simple stuff. Many of you know it, but I do see a lot of customers get confused. Here's uh, the man, Mr. Maxwell. And basically, Mr. Maxwell, in his equations, there is no ground. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's no voltage. Maxwell had no concept, of, well, he knew what a voltage was, but the equations, it's E and H, magnetic electric fields. You actually, if you were totally in this world, can define S parameters in this way. I don't need to know what a voltage is. I don't need to know what a current is. I just take the ratio in your waveguide of the input to the output power, complex, that's the S parameter. Unfortunately, or fortunately, you don't work in that world if you're a circuit designer. You work in the circuit simulation world. And the circuit simulation world is voltage and current. Your circuit simulator knows nothing of an E and an H field. Okay? So we have this problem of an EM simulator naturally wanting to be in the electromagnetic world, living in a circuit world which is voltage and current. Circuit simulators use Y matrices. Uh, you, they could use Z, but they don't because y, you can add elements in parallel in Y, and it's easier to add to your matrix. So they use Y matrices, not S. And so you are faced with a circuit simulator of taking your S parameters from the EM world and turning them into Y parameters, and that's how you do it. Okay. So there's your S matrix. I is the identity matrix. This is a three port. And you see that little ZG there? That's the port impedance. I have to have a port impedance to go from S to Y. And if I don't have that, I can't put that S parameter in a circuit simulator. Our concern today is if that's an impedance, voltage over current, where's ground? Every port has a port impedance, and so when you put it into your circuit simulator, you have to have a notion of the ground of that EM simulator of those ports. Okay? So, the first question before us is, how do you find out the ground of a port? Right? Well, it's in our world, in circuit world, usually most of our modes in EM are quasi-TEM. Got a coax coming in, microstrip line, etc. So the answer is in the quasi-TEM world, the current came out of the port this way down the line. Where did the current come from? That's the ground. That's the way I like to find it. Now, sometimes it's very easy. Uh, this is a box simulator. Uh, we have one EM site. There are other popular ones out there. And it came, uh, it, it, where's the ground? Well, the current comes out on the line. It came from the wall. It's a perfectly conducting wall. That's your ground. In our non-box simulator, no wall, we have two choices in axiom. We can either use a strap, a ground strap. The current comes up the strap. The ground's the bottom of the board. What's the ground for this guy? It's called an implicit port. Current comes out here. It had come from somewhere. The ground is at 
infinity. Now, if you're an EM theorist, that sounds like, oh, no problem, right? I hope if you're in your lab and someone says your ground's at infinity, you go, ah, uh, that doesn't sound so good to me. And so you've got to worry about this. But anyway, everybody has a ground, a 3D simulator, usually quasi-TEM mode. Where did the, uh, where's the ground of the port? This is a wave port in our analyst product. And of course, the return current is on the inside of the outer conductor. That's your ground. So the point being, know where the ground of your ports are. All right, now let's move on. Here is, if you remember our mimic on board, there's your mimic. That's a circuit simulation. That has a ground. It's node zero on your deck, on your net list, OK? There is one node zero. A circuit simulator only has one node zero. So how can it deal with S parameters with the ground on the mimic and the one on the board, and yet it only has one? Let's take a look. I might remind you, too, sometimes people forget this. Um, Here's the schematic, and of course, these are transmission line elements. They have a ground assumption, too, in that model. I don't see the ground, but it's assuming there's a ground plane. And every one of your ports, there's a ground assumption, OK? I always, even though you don't see it. Well, here's your S parameter. In the circuit, two ports. We got node 0, and this guy came from your EM simulator, and maybe that's the chip ground. And I'm on, you know, sitting here, where, how do I deal with this? Okay, let's say this indeed came from your uh, mimic or your, um, or your device or whatever. That ground of this guy when they made it, the EM simulator, had nothing to do with your ground of your circuit simulator. Most of you have already dealt with this without even knowing it probably. When you get transistor data from a network analyzer, so they measure it. And they probably have their beautiful little brass plate. That's a ground. And they put the two ports on. How many ports do they have on the network analyzer? Well, if you're a poor man, they, you have two. OK? And the transistor has three ports. So what do you do? You ground one. And you do a common gate, et cetera. And that S parameter file comes in, and I see two ports. But I want to get to the third port, the grounded port. So. What you do in the software is there's always this notion of exposing the ground node. We have it. Everyone has it. And the engineer clicks this thing, explicit ground port, and magically this little guy appears as a third node. That would be your drain, typically. And there's a little ground. And you say, this is the ground of that S parameter file. But the question is, what does that really mean? Uh, you can be fancier, make a nice symbol. What does this really mean? When you look at the way they really do it, they take the Y matrix and do some fancy math, which I don't know about you. I don't find Y matrix is all that intuitive. Here's what it's really doing. They do this. There's your EM simulation, two perfect transformers. There's node 0. See, the circuit simulator can handle this. And the way it's working is the voltage drop here is the same here. So effectively, this is your ground of the EM. That's the game they're playing behind the scenes, OK? Now, what about this? EM simulation, we split the ground plane, moved one above the other, connected by a via. This port is attached to this ground plane, this one to that one. Two different ground references, and I get the S parameters. Is that legal? Yeah. It'll give me an answer. I throw it in the circuit simulator, and now I try to model something. And I can model it. This is the model in the circuit simulator. You can do it. It'll match your curves very well. But the problem is I cannot tell you where that inductance came from. It's somewhere in that fuzzball of the EM. So the price you're paying with that is you've lost your physical intuition on your model. People also want to try this one of balancing ports. And this is what they're doing. You can do it, but be very careful from here to here is not isolating your ground out. People will try to do this and say, oh, that's the inductance of the ground. You can't do that. You cannot go from two ports magically to four and think you've created new physics. The right way to do it is you have to add two separate ports. OK? Another interesting example is chip on module. 
since these ports were on this ground of the chip of the module, you actually can use the simulation of the chip, put it here, and it will work. You can see here, finally, to conclude, the, the, uh, the uh, gain of the chip isolated and with the package, the degradation. So it works, but just be careful. You're using different grounds. I always think of that and keep it, uh, you know, keep it in mind. And with that, I conclude. Thank you very much.